This is Twit. Windows 10 October 2018 update. Couldn't they think of something more interesting? In, so, you know, it's boring, but it's way better than the other names they were coming up with, like Creators Update, Spring Creators Updates, yeah. Fall Creators Update. At least you know what it is. It's the update in October 2018. It's not fancy, but at least it tells you what it is. Yeah, it doesn't confuse half the world. It doesn't yeah. upset the number of people that didn't find anything creative in it. Um, it's obvious when it was released, so where it factors into the scheme of things. Um, and I think it also kind of reflects the nature of this bill, uh, this uh, version, just like the nature of the previous version, which was the April. April? Or was it the March? Yeah, the yeah, April, April update. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, th th wasn't a lot of nonsense stuff going on there. It was more about uh, productivity and refinements. And it's the kind of thing that I think Windows, sh you know, should be getting an update to, uh, like. You know, it's the type of update mm -hmm. that Windows should have, uh, given yeah. the fact that it's not a six-year-old mobile platform anymore. And I think I remember when Leo was on his fall vacation last fall when it was the creators mm -hmm. update. And then we were actually complaining that it wasn't enough stuff for creators. So apparently they heard us yeah. and we're never happy. <laughs> uh, that's true. We are never happy. But I think, or I'm never happy for sure. But <laughs> uh, but I like this. I like the the nature of this update. And I, I think that like, you know, it's not exciting, whatever. It doesn't have to be exciting. I mean, it's just version 1803, the October 2018 update. That's a, it's fine. That's a good, that's a good way to do it. It's nice not to have to complain about something silly. And when can we get it? When can I get <laughs> it on my, my Windows device? <laughs> I'm assuming mainstream users will get it in October since it's yep. called the October update. Well, that's, you're really not reading between the lines too much then. <laughs> I'm really no, going out uh, on a limb on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, no. You know what's uh, funny? Sure. Right and, before no, right before they did this announcement, I was kind of speculating they might surprise us and start rolling it out in September because it feels like yeah. they're going to be I done still think a they're little do earlier. That, yeah. You do? Yeah. Just for insiders, yeah. you think? Um, well, normally that would be what I would say, but I think with Ignite happening. And I think oh, yeah. there's a desire to show some form of progress. I find it really weird that they keep saying nearly 700 million devices. I mean, yeah. I think one of the things that they could tout accurately at Ignite is the speed at which they rolled out the last update and then the speed at which they've moved along to this mm -hmm. next version. Because it, it kind of ties in nicely with this kind of back and forth that's been going on ever since uh, Microsoft claimed that Windows was a service. And there have been uh, critics on one side saying that this is too fast. You can't, this, you know, this kind of momentum can't be sustained. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they had reliability problems last year. But this year it's, you know, we don't know how this one's going to go yet, obviously. But uh, it, it's fairly impressive to me the rate at which the previous update has rolled out and the kind of non-issue that it's been as far as people mm -hmm. having issues, uh, having problems. And so what about that yeah. 700, nearly 700 million devices? What, why haven't they gotten to 700 million yet? Yeah, well, that's a good question. We've asked. <laughs> we've asked a few times and they've just said, the figure stands. We're not telling you anything more than that. Why we keep saying nearly. And they've been saying nearly since March of this year, by the way. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually getting weird, I would say, at this it is. point. Yeah. Um, um, I bet it's. I bet you're right that it's because of Ignite, and they're trying to have some big momentum thing there. And if they sure. don't say it at Ignite, this is very worrisome. <laughs> because I don't. I, it's it's inexplicable. I mean, it really. It is. It's impossible, really. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, they've released several milestones for the usage numbers of Windows 10, and every time they do, I I do a little bit of back of the napkin math, and and this is the kind of the run rate at which new devices are coming online. And um, it was really big at first. It went down again, but then it's been steadily going up. And the last time uh, I did this, whenever the last milestone was, 600 million maybe or 650, whatever it was, uh, they were at almost 17 million new devices per month. Mm -hmm. And if, if you assume that it's flat and they did, uh, Terry Myerson said it, like you said, in late March, they said it again at Build. They said it again at, uh, and various times, they said it with their earnings at the end of June. Um, they said it this past week, um, mm -hmm. 17 million times, you know, five or six. I mean, we're getting into the, 
the point where you you have to have crossed this milestone. It do, it actually mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. You know, six hundred and one million is not nearly seven hundred million. Um, <laughs> so you have to sort of assume it was in the seven seventies, seven eighties. You know, I don't know what, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to you know, attribute this to. One reader gave me an interesting theory on this, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's true. It just was kind of an interesting idea. He said, um, you know, right now, most of the growth in Windows 10 um, in terms of new users being added is enterprise, right? Like it's the consumers have it. Um, and he said, so yeah. if you're an enterprise user, you technically, if you're at least if you're an enterprise, you know, Windows 10 enterprise SKU user, you can turn mm -hmm. off a lot of the telemetry that Microsoft uses to collect data on how many devices have this on it. But, I mean, can you turn off the telemetry that tells Microsoft you're using Windows 10? I mean, it's I, I don't just, know what, just to get Windows updates, it, you'd have to know that. You right? have to have some, you have to be connected in some way, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like to get security updates, you do. But, you know, I, I wonder if, Maybe they miscounted up till then, and then now they've kind of like lost the plot. I don't know. Like it's it's so inexplicable it's that they're not giving the number. Yep. It, it literally, know. given the data we've been given, is not explainable. It it something's wrong. Yeah. And so, what is going to be in this release that we haven't gotten before? Anything worth talking about? Um, you know. It's interesting. I, I would say that there are no blockbuster major new features in this release. And what there are instead are a ton of smaller things. And so I have a Windows 10 book that I update, you know, for each version, usually belatedly. It's kind of convoluted. I mean, over the past, not the last release, but the two before that, especially there was so much new stuff in every release. It kind of got hard to keep track of it all. Um, mm -hmm. If you look at the list of new features, and I've, I've, I have kind of listed it out, just not all in one place. There are a ton of them, but they're all pretty small. And so when I update the book, I created a new version of the chapter. I kind of listed all the new stuff that has to be added. And what's interesting about that is that a lot of it is kind of what I would call user interface or user experience type changes. And so if you look at something like Microsoft Edge, it doesn't really have any blockbuster new end user type features. It, it does, however, look completely different than it did before. Um, most of the major UI that anyone would touch, you know, with, or click on or whatever is different in some way. You know, the tool, the main toolbar, the settings, more, uh, menu, the, the settings interface, the, the, what used to be called the hub, the, you know, the favorites, the downloads, the history and all that stuff. Um, it all looks very different. Now, that's not something I have to explain in a book, how to use the pro, you know, it, I mean, I have to change, mm -hmm. alter the descriptions of some things, but it's not exactly a you know, like a big thing, like they changed a few toolbars, the reading modes have been improved, uh, you know, they, they, they've spread the learning tools that they have in the product to different uh, document types and so forth. And I'm not really describing anything, you know, we're not talking mm -hmm. about a new paradigm for web browsing here. It's just kind of fit and finish type stuff. And that, I think that's... You are forgetting, you are forgetting one big one though. Okay. How about the new notepad <laughs> features? Yeah, like I said, nothing. Um, Come on. <laughs> Well, nice. okay. This... Uh, in a in a book no. about Windows 10, I would never cover Notepad, <laughs> but if I did, and I were to look at, because it's not much to say. Um, what does it have? Unix style line endings, if you want that. Um, what it's else is there? I don't even know. I mean, it's not, it's not is there a dark, dark theme, theme now? I don't know. I don't care about that. But no, no there's a, there's a bunch of new Notepads. Well, actually, How about nice Cloud Clipboard? Thing. Cloud Clipboard. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. interesting, right? It's interesting. Um, yeah. You know what we don't know, though? That we don't know, like, the really meteor new features. Like, we don't have a list of what's new security-wise. Like, we can oh, kind of yeah. go back and pull out bits and pieces and different, you know, insider posts. There's also that um, thing that was called Windows 10 Enterprise Remote Sessions Edition, which the walking cat now says is called Windows 10 Enterprise for Virtual Desktops. That, if it is in... The October update is a huge thing because it'll give people a new way to do virtual desktops in Windows 10 Enterprise. So there are some things that are there that I bet they're trying to, again, save for Ignite, like to make a bigger deal out of them. Yeah. But not nothing, you know, I agree with you. Nothing like that you're like, whoa, you know, well, like this is going to change everybody's usage I of think, Windows. I, 
the original plan this year, as I understand it, was that you know the the April update was going to have um, one major feature, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and this version was going to have one major new feature, and the and the version for the you know the major new feature for this version was sets. And yeah. sets ended up being pushed back, right? So sets may be something that appears in the next release. I, mm -hmm. I would I would consider that a major new feature. Um, I don't consider its loss a major deal. I mean, I think, you know, for most people, yeah. whatever. But um, but it would have been a nice change, you know, an interesting new mm -hmm. change. Um, yeah. That just didn't make it. So, but it's fine because, like I said, I I actually prefer it this way. I don't want to have to mm -hmm. rethink and relearn things every time. Um, you know, Windows flips a version. And, uh, you know, in yeah. the old days, they used to change the location of things in the start menu, just kind of arbitrarily. Um, you know, the edge things I just mentioned are a little bit like that, but really what they're related to are just the fact that this application has gotten more complex. It's kind of like mm -hmm. the settings app in Windows 10. If you go back to the first version, there were probably like six top-level items. It was the simplest UI in the world. And it's gotten, you know, um, a little more you know, it's got a bunch of new stuff over time. Now there's like a sidebar and there's all these additional mm -hmm. features and it's it's just picked up a bunch of func functionality. And that's kind of what's happened to Edge. It's, it's kind of like a feature creep yeah. kind of a thing.